Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Carbo Gaming and another Fallout 76 Wastelanders video. Well, it's finally here ladies and gentlemen. Update 19 has arrived today and with it comes some extraordinary changes to Fallout 76. It's given us a lot of great content and a whole a lot of fun things to do. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Now as always, I'll be leaving a link down below so you can check out these lovely patch notes yourself as well as I'll be time stamping it so you could jump right into the section that you would like to see. So let's head over to Bethesda.net and let's see what update 19 will bring in our highlights. Now with our highlights we have LI customization, we have the hunt for the treasure hunt, we have the fashionata parade that is pretty much almost here and item naming updates, backpack updates and the nuclear winter limited time challenges. So let's get started first up with the update version now the update that you will be downloading is roughly around 10.7 gigabytes except for when i was on playstation it was at 8.6 the update is 1.38 now for the customize your allies now starting today you can share your wardrobe with your allies and swap their favorite outfits to your hearts content with ally customization now when interacting with an ally in your camp, a new customize option will now appear that you can use to change their clothing, outfits, headwear, costumes, armor. If you can wear it, they can also too. Now, the only current exceptions are power armor and weapons, but we know a little sneaky way around to have them pick up those weapons. Now, anything you dress, your ally is in purely cosmetic. They will not receive any buffs or bonuses from the apparel that they wear. Now, additionally, when viewing another player's ally, its name will be adjusted to include the name of the camp owner, e.g. the ally. Please note that scrapping an ally station will revert the ally to their default outfit. Allies will also appear to be in their default outfit if they are in an instance with you. Next up, we have Hunt for the Treasure Hunter. Mole miners are searching for riches around Appalachia, and you can hunt them down to claim their loot for yourself in a new series of limited time hunt for the treasure hunter events we're introducing with update 19. So let's go over this new treasure hunt. Treasure hunter mole miners. Now with this, you use your keen tracking senses to hunt down treasure hunter mole miners to collect their mole miner pals which contain all of the loot they've been hoarding. So, with this, treasure hunter mole miners are legendary creatures, and you will hear them when they are nearby. Treasure hunter mole miners can drop rewards from one of three different tiers. Dusty mole miner pels, low. We have mole miner pels, medium, and ornate. Mill, oh, mole miner pels, high. The higher quality of the pale, the better chances for rare loot, including outfits, mounted head plans, and a new backpack plan, and the marine armor helmet plan. Pretty freaking nice. Pales can be traded and sold to other players as well, but cannot be sold to NPC vendors. Next up, craft your own mole miner pales. While a treasure hunter event is live, vendors around Appalachia will sell empty mole miner pails in exchange for caps. So with this, you use these empty pails along with a few additional materials to craft full mole miner pails of low, medium, or high quality. Now you can give or sell crafted pails to other players or keep them for yourself, much similar to the holiday gifting event, which is pretty freaking cool if I don't say so myself. Next up we have head to the ash heap on May the 21st. Now the first hunt for the treasure hunter event will take place from May the 21st through May the 25th in the ash heap region of Appalachia. Future hunt for the treasure hunter events will each occur in a different region. Next up we have the Fashionata Parade marches back to Halvita. Now, starting next week, you can travel to Halvita to take part in the Fashionetta seasonal event. It is returning 
Now, by helping the local protectons prepare for the town's annual celebration and parade, you can net yourself some very lovely rewards. So, what you're going to do is help the bots by hanging decorations, gathering ingredients for feasts, or playing musical instruments, among other activities, before the timer expires. Now, if you and your event mates complete the preparations in time, the bot will line up at the center of the town to begin the parade. Now, successfully guide the marchers to the end of the parade route, and you will be rewarded with a loot. The more marchers who survive, the higher your chances are at the rare loot, which may include fashionette themed camp plans and a chance to earn a fancy fashionette mask. Now, we've added a number of festive new masks this year and adjusted their drop weights following community feedback. While some are still less common than others, they should drop more often this time. So, with the Fashionetta mask, you can also trade these to other players if you wish. Fashionetta Parade will begin every hour at the top of the hour starting on May the 25th, and the event will last for a full week. You will have plenty of chances to join in a celebration and to get these lovely rewards. Next up, we have Design Updates. Automatic Item Name Improvements. With this update, we've improved how the game automatically named your weapons and armor based on their mods, legendary attributes, and atomic shop paints. Going forward, automatically generated names will appear in a much more consistent order, and they will be reliably included in item main attributes. Now, additionally, atomic shop paint and skin names no longer overwrite the item's primary legendary effect name. Items should now generally follow this naming convention. Primary legendary attribute name plus atomic shop cosmetic name plus mod name plus weapon name. So, there you have it. Now, if you have a legendary Gatling gun with the Black Knight paint and a primary secret, for example, it automatically generates name should now be Anti-Armor Black Knight Prime Gatling Gun makes sense. Now keep in mind that you can still give your items custom names which will override their automatically generated names. Please note, given the main combinations that are possible through all the different most legendary effects, item shop paints, and item types, there may be cases where new items name appear incorrect. For example, certain elements may appear out of order or might be missing from the name. These are visual issues, and all your mods should still function correctly. Please let us know if you spot any naming bugs on your gear after today's update, and we will squash them. How quickly, we will soon find out. Next up, we have Backpack Appearance Update. We've improved backpack customization so that now you can apply different appearances to your backpacks as skins. No more crafting is required. Head to a normal workbench and use the modified menu to swap the appearance of your existing backpack with any skin you've unlocked through event, quest, and the atomic shop. Skins can now be applied to small backpacks as well as for those who have not yet unlocked the normal backpack plans by completing the order of the tadpole quest. You can apply skins to your existing backpack as well as any new ones that you craft. Next up, art and animation. We have barbecue grills. Get hungry. When using a barbecue grill, your character will now appear to flip and grill some tasty steaks. Pretty cool. Grognac Stone. We've added a new animation that will play when sitting in Grognac Stone so that you can survey your land with the royal confidence. Under items, Liberty Prime Power Armor. If you're a strong silent type, you may be pleased to know that we've added an alternate version of the Liberty Prime Power Armor helmet that you may play a voice lines while you're wearing it. Pretty cool. Players who own the Liberty Prime Power Armor can now craft the silent version of the helmet at a Power Armor station. Next up, Nuclear Winner. Limited time, survivor challenges, and unlock theme cosmetics. We've added eight Nuclear Winter challenges that you can complete to earn new Survivor themes cosmetic rewards starting today and lasting until 7 p.m. Eastern Time on June the 11th. One new challenge will appear in the Character Challenge menu each day until all eight are available, and they will remain available until the end of the event. You can earn the first reward with 150 Overshare XP points and at least 200 and 2,500 Overshare XP points. All others will each require 2,000 Overshare XP. 
Over Shay XP, you earn will roll over from one challenge to the next, but they must be completed one at a time and in order. As you complete each challenge, you will be able to claim new theme rewards like new furniture for your camp, survivor denima, and ghillie suit outfits, and as well as skins for Nuclear Winter newest weapons, the bow, cattle prod, and God's shotgun. Pretty cool. Now you can learn more about these events directly from Zach and preview the wars by reading the latest Zach transmission at Fallout.com. Next up, new items, new weapons, the bow, the cattle proc, and the guy shotgun have been added and tuned for combat and nuclear winter matches. Find them in supply crates as you scavenge for gear. Next up, bug fixes, art, and animation. Animations. Dying while playing an instrument no longer causes the, the instruments to become invisible after respawning. Fix the issue that could cause the overseer to slide out of her chair before standing. Fix the rare issue that could cause the player to fall through the world during character creation. Lighting. Optimize the lighting inside of the overseer house and the way we're to address performance issues. And textures. The clandestine gauze pistol skin now appears correctly when applied to the drum magazine mod. Next up, camps and workshop allies. No longer sometimes attack the player, other camp objects and torts. That was annoying, glad they fixed that. Next up, build. Moving camp location now correctly closes the build menu for teammates who had it open while in the original build area. Collectron station. The communist collectron will now find propaganda flyers less often while scavenging. Display cases. Assigning an item to a display case no longer sometimes prevents the player from crafting other items of the same type. Now, here comes the exploit. They said they addressed the duplication exploit related to camp objects and another exploit addressed the camp budget exploit, which I had no idea about. So, those have been fixed. Next up, lights. Bulb lights can no longer consume camp budget than intended. That's awesome. So when you log in, you should have more camp budget. Also, under lights, the Claxton wall light can no longer be turned on if it is not connected to a power source. And locks. Locked objects in player camps now better indicate to players who do not own them that they will become wanted if they pick the lock. Trees can now be placed on a wider variety of terrain types and turrets address the issue that could cause camp turrets to attack each other. That was annoying and the sound from that was just ugh. Didn't even want to be at my camp. Glad they fixed that. Next up, workbenches. Players can now correctly use workbenches immediately after an NPC has used them. And workbenches. Exiting a power armor station no longer sometimes causes the controls to temporarily lock up. Next up, combat. Stealth. Receiving stealth from multiple sources at once, like the escape artist per card, stealth boys, chameleon armor, etc., no longer causes enemies to instantly detect the player. And bats, changing the body part selection in bats while using charging weapons like the bow gun or a gas weapon no longer causes the next shot to hit the previous selected body part. Under enemies, blood eagles no longer sometimes drop weapons that have nuclear winter mods as loot. And scorch. Fix the issue causing more boss scores to spawn at the top of the Thunder Mountain power plant than intended. And the Wendigo Colossus. Fix the issue that could cause the Wendigo Colossus to suddenly stop taking damage. Next up under challenges, the Daily, Lou Mine Foundation and Crater now have locations that are considered subterrain for challenges like level up in caves and mines. Now there isn't an exploit that they've addressed. Dress X with that could allow players to complete certain tapway and possum challenges repeatedly for rewards. And social. The claim different workshop challenge no longer requires the spruce knot workshop at the number of workshops needed to complete the challenge and has been reduced from 20 to 18. For the world, the complete day different daily challenges now correctly appears in the world category for completing the completing event while in a group challenge. Next up under items, armor, secret server, or chest armor can now be repaired beyond 100% condition using per car slide fix it good. Exploit address the ammo exploit for weapons that use fusion cores as ammo. Fusion cores fix several issues that could prevent weapons that use fusion cores as ammo like the Gatling laser from firing correctly. Gas mask, raider, skull. Gas mask now correctly remove other headwear when equipped. Headwear fix the issue that could prevent a character's body from rendering when wearing the communist militia hat. Headwear, the free radical mask is no longer a legendary item, which is now consistent with all other headwear. Jetpacks fix the issue allows jetpack power armor mods can now be applied to the torso. 
and outfits. Backpacks now correctly appear while wearing the Mountain Scout outfit. Pretty cool. Love that because that was definitely an issue and I'm actually rocking it right now. Power Armor, the Settler Vigilante paint no longer removes rat resistance from T-51 Power Armor. Remove references to Vault 94 when crafting Strangler Heart Power Armor. Fix the issue that could cause a, another player to appear to be idle inside the power armor while they were actively using a power armor station. Under Armor corrected the name of the plant to craft a secret server under armor and move that that's actually really good. And move secret server under armor to the under armor category in the armor workbench. So clear up some confusion for those who may be thinking they're actually getting armor when they're not. Under weapons, gas shotguns can now correctly use the Science Master 1 perk in order to craft them. Commander Daguerre's final quest now correctly awards a level 50 Vats Unknown Alien Blaster to characters over level 50. I wish they would actively retro give us to everybody that has already completed because mine's is still 35 so yeah that is what it is. Next up Weapons, Gatling guns now correctly display a fire rate of 20 in the pit more. Now NPCs, allies. Speaking with Commander Daguerre immediately after fast traveling during her quest line no longer sometimes prevent Emerson from visiting. Dialogue, exiting and quickly re-enter dialing with NPCs should no longer result in a notification setting. This individual is busy. Frida Mandai is no longer sometimes walks away during a conversation with the player. Jai no longer clips into the stairs in front of the waiver. Purveyor murmur. Fix the issue that could prevent players from interacting with the purveyor in first person view and random encounters. The settler that shoots at a possum doing a random encounter no longer always spawns at level one. Smiley. If a player has purchased all of Smiley's gold bullion for the week, he will no longer continue to ask if they are interested in buying more. Performances and stability. Server stability. Fix the number of issues that can result in server crash during normal gameplay. Fix the stability issue caused by large stacks of inventory items. Address the server crash that could occur when updating players' quest targets. Fix the server crash that occur when players in private world. Fix the issue that could cause a server crash in nuclear winter. Also, address the issue that could result in client crash during normal gameplay. Fix the rare issue that could result in infinite loading screens and a crash when loading into a world from the main menu. Fix the crash that could occur when opening a perk card pack and fix the crash that could occur on Xbox when building in a camp. Next up, quests and events. All that glitters. Fix the issue that prevented the clear out the security forces objective from completing correctly. Ally quests. Quest markers no longer fall, fail to re repair after logging out and back in while in the middle of an ally quest. Fix the issue that could result in duplicate ally quest items remaining in the world without quest markers after the player logged off. Ally thickening water. Fix the issue that could prevent the player from receiving the thickening water quest after completing an eagle flies tree. Ally narrow escape. Beckett no longer appears in Roland Labor Cabin when the quest is not running. Ally thickening water. Animation Beckett now correctly faces the player when speaking to them during scenes with the claw. Ally thickening water. Fix the issue that could allow a player to enter Watoga Civic Center through a locked door. Ally thickening water. Address the interaction issue that could occur when progressing this quest while on a team. Ally the universe conspires. Fix the issue that could prevent Emerson from visiting and block progression when an attempt to turn in the quest to Commander Daguerre. Announce the preservation move the T types view from Greg's mine supply to the Charleston Trace Station Yard so it's easier to find. Back on the beat, address the issue that could prevent the public event from starting. Buried treasure. Fix the issue that could block progression after interacting with the intercom as the raiding party entered to the security room. Exploit. Address the reputation exploit affecting a conversation with Meg. Exploit. Address the exploit that could allow players to complete the vital equipment daily quest multiple times per day. Next up, from Russia with Lev. Fixed multiple discrepancies between Lev, subtitles and dialogue, fun and games. Backing out of a conversation and after asking Rara to enter the power armor room no longer causes her to become unresponsive. Also, on the front of games, Rara no longer becomes unresponsive after destroying the protection after she spawns. The Sentry bot in Grafton Steel Underground can no longer be damaged while it is still in the fabrication and will no longer exit the fabricator early. Rawa will no longer path to nearby protection corpses instead of entering the first vent. The follow Rawa objective no longer persists after finding a collection of bonbons. And a terminal in Grafton Steel Underground that was previously unhackable can now be hacked correctly. 
Under Heart of the Enemy, the lockpicking skill requirement for door between the automated research program and the re reactor has been reduced from 1 to 0 so that the quest is easier to complete for players who are missing lockpicking perk cards. Now for Overseer Overseer. The Overseer will now exit combat and move toward the player when she is too far away. Project Paradise fix the issue that can sometimes prevent Project Paradise from completing after completing the Alpha Predator. Random Encounters fix the issue that prevented players from receiving loot during a random encounter with the Settler Apprentice after selecting Raider Theme Dialogue options. Safe for work. Players are no longer required to pick the lock on the Medical Center crate to obtain Patrol Tape 04. Secrets Reveal. Duchess no longer speaks her post Vault 79 rare dialogue before the player has completed Secrets Reveal. After progressing to the resolve the situation with Johnny objective, the player's conversation with him will now end correctly. Also, the Vault 79 elevator code objective now reappears correctly when returning to the elevator. Fix the issue that could cause team members to move outside of Appalachian when team leader enter the elevator to the Gold Operations Center. Siding with Crater, Meg no longer forces a player into conversation if they back out before deciding whether to side with the Raiders. Strange Bedfellows. Acquiring the photo of Rosalind Memorial prematurely no longer blocks progression during Strange Bedfellows. Also, quest item obtained during Strange Bedfellows are now correctly removed to the completing the quest. Added a new objective, directing players to complete the prerequisite quest signal, strength before progressing to Strange Bedfellows, strength numbers, poly head, now correctly deals damage in vets and deal increased damage based on how many times it has been charged. The elusive crane, Mort no longer appears to be standing idle during a scene with Roker and the Wayward, and fixed the issue that could cause the fine crane treasure objective to persist in the Pip-Boy quest description. The Old Western Shuffle. The dud explosive collar is now correctly removed from the character's model after completing the quest, and the new arrival of the quest tracker no longer displays the two talk to the overseer objective under certain conditions. Next up, sound. Sound effects. The Stanley skin of Ryan X no longer plays its sound effects when effects twice when equipped when switching between first and third person view. Also repeatedly entering and exiting a gold press machine no longer causes it to multiply overlap sound effects. Under user interface controls opening the pit boy while attempting to fast travel during combat no longer sometimes causes the controls to be unresponsive. And also under crosshairs, now correctly changed to open square when pressing or place items that a player can interact with or pick up. Fanfare, treasury notes no longer play legendary item fanfare when removing them from the stash. Login, the password field is now clearly corrected after entering the incorrect password when attempting to link a Bethesda.net account to Fallout 76. Menus fix several issues that could cause the favorite menus to suddenly appear while emotes menu was open. Notification equipping headware by holding the action button no longer generates an error message starting unable to equip them. Now under Pit Boy, the item states card no longer persists when switching to an empty tab in the Pit Boy. Press and hold holding the action button to equip, learn, or consume an item in the world now works more consistently. Quest the daily quest the player has rejected in the Pit Boy no longer automatically appears after logging out and back in. And also fix the issue causing placeholder text to appear when viewing miscellaneous quests on the map. Reclamation Day no longer appears from the completed section in the Pip-Boy main quest tab. Sorting The Spoil Sorting uh, now correctly organizes aid items by re their remaining condition. And Tag for Research, the magnifying glass icon now appears correctly on junk items in the world that contain components the player has tagged for research. Trade players can now inspect items when trading with other players. Vending machines, stacks of US government, supply requisition holotapes, and technical nodala no longer sometimes disappear after being assigned to a vending machine and workbenches. Radio vacuum to preview images no longer stand beyond the edge of the screen in the Tinker's workbench. And we're almost done ladies and gentlemen. Underworld Cranberry Bog. The Wendigo Colossus no longer gets stuck in the trenches in Cranberry Bog. The Forest of Wendigo Colossus no longer gets stuck on the guardrails in the road near Sokum Joe's. Forest fixed the train issue that could cause players to appear to float in front of Lacey's and Ezell outside of Vault 76. Savage Divide. The basement door on the mountainside bed and breakfast no longer locks itself 
If a player leaves the area and returns, settlement, yell guy, and scorch no longer spawns in NPC settlements like Crater Foundation or Big Ben Tunnel East. Toxic Valor removed a non-functional hatch door from the Clarksburg Pharmacy. NPCs correctly pitched patching issues from several NPCs that can be found in the world. And last but not least, Nuclear Winter Bug Fixes Camp. Updated the list of biddable and non-biddable atomic shop objects in Nuclear Winter. Remove the non-functional activator from the scrap box when it is built in Nuclear Winter. Localization restored. Missing characters on the Nuclear Winter map voting screen in the Japanese version of the game. And perk cards. Remove Nuclear Winter perk cards from Adventure Mode quests that were awarding them as currency. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The new update 19 is here, and we have a whole bunch that it brought to us. Ally customization, the new hunt for the treasure event, the fashion netter parade, new backpack skins, and yes, you can give clothes to your allies. So yeah, that's pretty much going in for the video, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I hope you truly enjoyed it. As always, if you are new to this channel, hello, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you really want to help out this channel in a video, help this community grow, well, you can do so by liking the video if you indeed like the video and leaving a comment down below. I answer all of your questions. So if you have any of them, just hit me up and I'll get to you back as soon as possible. Hope you and your family's having a wonderful day and I hope you have a great time playing Fallout 76. And as always, I'll be seeing y'all in the next one. Later.